David Smith here with another Flip Classroom Math lesson. Three tips before we start. Remember that you can adjust the playback speed if that helps you work through the video. You can also pause the video at any point to take notes or jot down questions. Lastly, you can turn on the captions so you can read my words go by on the screen. Today's lesson talks about function notation and then manipulating functions. So we're going to do a couple things here. First, let's take a look at the notation. This is f of x, and of course that's what I'm saying here. It, it means f of x. Basically, this is another fancy way of writing y. So for example, we might write this function f of x equals x squared plus 1. This is a parabola, but what we can do here is it's just a substitute for y. So it's the same equation as y equals x squared plus 1. But now we're talking about it as a function rather than an equation. And that emphasizes the fact that the x values are input and f of x is the output. So we kind of look as a, at a function as a machine that has some rules inside and you shovel in x values, the machine does what the rules tell it to do and it spits out the y values. And then to review, the x values are the independent variables because you choose those, they're, they're the domain, and the y values are the dependent variables because they depend on what the x is that got put in there, and that's also called the range. So reviewing a couple of those, t those terms for you as well. Okay, so here's the kind of questions you might get. Find f of 2. And so what that means is put in the 2 wherever the x is in f of x. So f of 2 is going to be 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. So f of 2 equals 5. So you're going to see some, um, some instructions that write it like this. Of course, you have to have the function to be able to do that. Now here's another way that they might ask the same question. Find the image of x equals minus 1. Remember, the image is the y value. So this one is just the same thing as saying f of minus 1, which is going to be minus 1 squared plus 1. And that's 2. So the image of x equals minus 1 is 2. Now another question that you might get relates to finding out if a point is on the graph of a function. So remember we did that in one of the previous lessons. Now we're going to determine whether the point 5, 26 lies on the graph of function f. And this is our function f for the moment. So we just have to plug the 5 into the function, and if it spits out 26, then we know it does lie on the line of the graph. Otherwise, it won't. So let's do f of 5. So here's f of 5. And we just put in our 5. So this is 5 squared plus 1. And I think you can probably see that's 26. So the answer is yes. And if you get a test question that asks you this question, make sure you answer the question. If you just write this, you're leaving a little room for losing some points. Okay, now let's do an IB style word problem that deals with a function and asks you four different kinds of questions about that function, or questions that you have to use the function to answer. So let's take a look at this. Basically, we've got a situation where a motorcycle loses value over time. Makes sense, it gets older, it gets used, it's not worth as much. So the price in US dollars of a motorcycle t years after purchase is modeled by p of t, price as a function of time, is modeled by 15,000 minus 2,500 times t. Okay, so this is an equation that helps us calculate how much the motorcycle is worth after t years. First question, state the independent and dependent variables. So pause the video and think about that for a minute. Okay, independent variable is the time. Almost always when you have time, that's the independent variable because that's the one that we pick. We're going to analyze it at one year or three years or five years or something like that. So time would be the independent variable right there, time, and that's t. And the dependent variable is price because price depends on the time passed. So this would be um, price, and that's p. Okay? Now the second question is, find the price of the motorcycle after 1.5 years. So what I want you to do is think about that, pause the video, and do that math. 
Okay, let's see how you did. So here's how we'd write this in function notation. P of 1.5 equals 15,000 minus 2,500 times 1.5. So the rest of it is a handy dandy straightforward calculation. Okay, so that calculation ends up being $11,250. So if you didn't get that, try it again. Make sure you can get that result. Okay, let's do two more questions on the same scenario. These are a little bit more complicated. So here's the first one. Find P of zero, and what does that mean? So let's think for a minute. What is P of zero? What does that zero represent in our scenario with this motorcycle? Okay. If you realize that P of zero is the moment that you bought it, that's right, because no time has gone by. Remember, this is the time part, P of t, in our function. So P of zero would be, in our notation, it'd be 15,000 minus 2,500 times zero, which is just 15,000. So what does that mean? What is that, how is that number significant? in our scenario. It's the price of the motorcycle when it's new. P of zero, no time has gone by. So it's a brand new motorcycle. So if you walk into the showroom, this is what you're gonna spend on that motorcycle, okay? All right, now let's go on to the next one. Find the value of T, so what time, what is the value of time for which P of that T is 62.50? So think a minute, what is that question asking? Okay, it's asking, when is the motorcycle worth $62.50? In other words, how much time does it take for the motorcycle to drop from this $15,000 to $62.50? Okay, so check this out. We know P of T is $62.50, so that goes here, $62.50, and now that's going to equal $15,000 minus, what is it, 2,500 t. And that's an equation with one variable. We can solve that all day long. So what I want you to do right now is pause the video and do that. Okay, so let's see how you did. What I did is I subtract, I'm trying to get t alone. So the first thing is to get all the terms without t's in them onto the other side. So I'm subtracting 15,000 from both sides. And I get minus 8750 equals minus 2,500 t. And then I just divide both sides through by minus 2,500, and that makes this go positive, and it's 3.5 for t. So it takes 3.5 years for the motorcycle to go down in value from 15,000 to 6,250. If you wanted to check your answer, you could take this 3.5, plug it in here, and you should get out 6,250. Okay, last two questions. Comment on the case t equals 6. So before we dive into that, I really want you to pause the video and, and look at what that means and see if you can comment on that when t equals 6. Okay, if you realize, they're asking you what happens um, at 6 years. What, what is the case when t equals 6? So we're going to know p of 6 equals 15,000 minus 2,500, not 25,000, 2,500 times 6. And if you do that math, you're going to find out that P of 6 equals, pause the video, do the calc, equals 0. So what does that mean? Think about that. This means that at, the, at year 6, the motorcycle has lost all its value. It is worth nada, nothing. Now, in reality, probably not true. Um, vehicles like motorcycles and cars tend to, they'll retain their value. They lose a lot of it in the beginning, but they'll still have some value. So this is not really accurate as far as this function needs to be a little different to actually model this kind of a price decrease accurately. But for this problem, this is totally fine. So this means, when you say comment on the case t equals 6, you want to do and show this math, and then say something like, after six years, the motorcycle has no value. Okay, last one. Sketch P of T. Keyword, sketch. That means make a rough graph. Doesn't mean plot a million points. 
me just make a rough graph. So here we go. Actually, pause the video and see if you can do that. You've got two variables. You've got time and value. See if you can do that. Okay, let's see how you did. Bump, bump. Time, T, price, P. It's going to go like that. We know this is 15,000 at t equals 0, and this is t equals 6. And you could do like 5,000 here and 10,000 there. And that's a perfectly good sketch. I guess we, we'd want to put dollars for our units and time for our years. So that would be a sketch. Notice I didn't plot any points, I didn't run things to the equation, I just used what I knew about what we did, and I've, I got my quick graph. Just out of interest, here's what the graph really would look like for this kind of a thing. It would, gr it would decline steeply at first, but over time it declines less and less. And what they say about cars and trucks and motorcycles is that they, they, after a certain age they hit a residual value that's not going to change. Sometimes, if it becomes collectible, the value might actually start going up. Like, think of a classic muscle car. If it's in good shape, it's probably worth more than it was paid for when it was new. Now that you've watched the video, take a minute to jot down notes or questions that you might have for our next class. You can also re-watch portions of the video that didn't sink in the first time. If you enjoyed the video, please click like, and if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.